can't be naive There's always something up their sleeve A twisted reason they commit this treason A friendship bound from now till the end of time What's up, everybody? It's Kurt Dimer. Hey, man, it's Phil X. Burn together. Feel the pain. Let's rock. Let's rock. Ow! When we are all one, we can sustain. How you doing? Good, Ken. How you doing? I'm good, thanks. Awesome. Welcome to Let's Rock. Thanks for having us, Ken. Oh, my pleasure. Um... And congratulations, by the way. Fantastic EP. I just heard it yesterday for the first time. Oh, thank uh-huh. you. Really appreciate that, man. Boom. It sounds great. I didn't even know about it until yesterday when Chip got in touch with me. Well, now you're a listener. Work I hard, am. rock hard. <laughs> I love it. Work hard, rock hard. Um, Phil, good to see you. Good to see you too, buddy. How you doing? Good. Long time fan since Triumph. Wow. Woo. Yeah, go way back. Um, so yeah, I've uh I've been trying to get you on this site for a long time. You're hard to get in touch with. You're just talking to the wrong people. Apparently, <laughs> apparently, yeah. <laughs> so tell us about this uh this EP. Like you said, work hard, rock hard. How did this thing all get going? Um, well, made my way to LA a few years ago and uh I had brought a demo out under a different na- a name I was under prior to going under my name, Kurt Dimer. <laughs> and I uh, was doing a little promo thing. And I, uh, my prior management hooked me up with Chris Lord Algae during COVID to take a look at this um, um, demo that I had and, and remix it. And that's how Chris and I met. And then he, my old writing partner, Ben uh, Trexel, had set an idea a couple of years ago that he'd like for us to do this, have a cigar cover the idea he had of Pink Floyd, have a cigar. And I, I wasn't too into it at first. I wasn't sure how that would play out in my head. And then Chris said, let me play with it a little bit. And while I was gone doing this promo thing, little did I know he gets a hold of Phil X and has him uh, play guitars. Cause at this point still it's the CLA band, you know, his, his little private people which and the guitar solo came back at the end and the layout of what how I was to do the vocals and it just blew me away and uh so that's kind of how uh, Phil and I got together we met for the first time on the set of the have a cigar video shoot and then uh we kind of hit it off he was giving me advice always put your best foot forward and all that Phil I'll never forget that and uh so it made me really start thinking and revisiting things but i still wanted to get out and play and make sure before i wasted anybody's time that i wanted to be in front of audiences and entertain people so i did a tour under that demo album that chris and and i did we even played have a cigar not with phil um brent woods was my guitarist on that tour who played the solo and it just kind of took off from there and uh phil and i just kept in touch and you know became good friends and uh Chris had us start writing together and now we're, we have such a rhythm going that I I don't know. I don't know if we'll ever stop. I mean, it's, it's just working so well together. Uh, What you've heard is six songs have probably fill what we have at least 30 that are ready to go on EPs that Chris and Phil and I have done together. So it's pretty exciting, man. It's all kind of happened fast. Once Phil and I got together in that video in 2020, of August of 2020, here we are now. So, it's for me, it's like, I call it canvases because for the longest time I had this, you know, my band, the Drills, and I was lead singing and playing guitar and fronting that. And then I got the Jovi thing. And then so now I'm, you know, in Bon Jovi, but that's completely two different canvases. So when the Kurt thing came up, I, I knew I wanted it to be special and different than anything else I was doing it doing at the time and i knew that it needed stupid awesome guitars <laughs> everything needs but, stupid awesome guitars yes I, i've mentioned this before i I, did, I went in as a session guy wanting it to be you know like when i did the Daughtry record his guitar players learned it and went in and performed it so i was kind of get, getting into that mindset and then and then when uh when we started writing together 
that took it to another level and I had more invested. And then when he said, uh, hey, you need to be in the band. And I was like, I think I do. But now, now I got to learn all these parts and play them. <laughs> <laughs> it never gets easy, does it? No, How man. How do you have the time for all this? And I, everything that we've re been recording since, I, I keep the same mentality. I want it. I want the guitar world to be interesting and technically, you know, difficult here and there. Little, little, little nuances. And uh, so I'm not scared to play it live. It's just something I want. I want to happen. I want that that part even live. You know, Kurt is in the center, and he's he's you know the ringleader. And then I'm off to the side, guitar magic. <laughs> <laughs> the best kind of magic. But how do you have time for all of this? You, I mean, oh my God, dude, like, don't you stop? Um, I do stop, but we stopped for so long with COVID. You know, there were so many months that nobody went anywhere. And, uh, and then it, everything just, we, me, Kurt and I look at the calendar and I say, this is coming up. And I got Bon Jovi in April and he's like, that's cool because I'm going to work on my movie. And and then after the Bon Jovi thing in April, we're going on tour supporting Angry and Malmsteen all over the U.S. So, I mean, we just we just we make it work. That's awesome. That's yeah. great. And you just uh, oh, before I get to that, let's talk a bit about a bit more about this album. Who else plays on this album? On the album, it's uh, Phil and Chris. Chris Lord Algae does a lot of stuff. Uh, myself, of course, that I do do the Phil and I harmonize together. But I'm obviously you can tell by my voice. I'm a lead singer, and uh, Brian Tishy does the drums. And Phil, you do all the bass, don't you? Pretty well, much. Daniel Spree from the, the Drills. He also played bass on some and songs. Dan oh yeah, and Daniel's the, done some too. The way we work, it just you know, I play all the guitars and then I know exactly what I want the bass to do. So I just lay it down and then Chris goes, let's just keep this. So that's how it ended up happening like that. But it's, you know, it's a really amazing thing about it is, and I don't even know if Kurt knows this. I, I, I approach this way different than I approach anything else. Cause I know it's Kurt. And even when we the, we write two song, the, like the songs, I, I go in and, you know, I'll give, I'll give Chris like 18 background vocal parts <laughs> <laughs> and he doesn't use them all I go I'd rather you have too much than not enough you know if I'm going into Def Leppard highs if he thinks the song needs it he puts them in if he thinks the song doesn't need him he pulls them out so I like to have a variety <laughs> I didn't know you said so many <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then I love it when Phil gives me my guide vocal the, of how he wants me to sing the lyrics and he's doing, <laughs> singing low, trying to give me I'm that. Lyric, you know, it's pretty cool. I love it. He's a producer's worst nightmare. So, <laughs> oh, I, no, you can't have enough when you're writing a song and you want it to be great because like we just finished a song a couple of weeks ago in the studio when we were all together and Phil had this one thing in there, and then Chris came up with this, and Phil had laid, done all these guitar parts, and then Chris does, I don't even know what Chris did, but you remember what I'm talking about, Phil, yeah. in, in the dance, and he just, he, it was killer. I mean, you got to It's very interesting, because he, we all have different brains, right? Yeah. But we're all on the same page. So we had this vocal breakdown, and... Uh, it sounded a little too vocal breakdown, you know, like an acoustic guitar and stacked vocals and stuff. And I'm like, I don't, I think this is going somewhere I don't want it to go. Let's take this really cool octave riff at the beginning of the song and fly it into this hole. And then Chris ran with that and he put this thing on it and another thing on it and a little sweep on it. And hey, let's program this. And it came out so awesome. Oh, it's, it was so good. Yeah. I mean, what, I that it made me miss being in the studio with a bunch of guys because everything happens so remotely these days. Hey, I got the drums, I need guitars. Hey, I need the bass. Hey, I need some vocals. And then the mixer puts it all together. But being there for those two days to work on a few songs that were new, it was pretty amazing. Yeah, it was fun. It was cool. Very cool. Yeah, it must have been a couple of years since you've jammed with anybody. Yeah. That's cool. Well, that was 20 was a weird time, man. 2020 was a weird time. Because uh, I was on tour with the, the drills in the UK 
and we had to come home. We got the tours cut in half because of lockdown. So came home, quarantined for 13 days, went home and was like, what am I going to do? Bon Jovi canceled June and July. I'm sitting there going, I got to provide for a family. And it was June, I believe, that Chris sent me have a cigar. It was, yeah. Because that's when I was on that promo thing. And, I, and it was perfect timing, not because, give me anything, man. I'll do anything. I heard what, what was happening and I was like, wow, this is going to be cool and very unique for me. But everything, like I felt, like it, the way I felt the solo when I recorded the solo, I couldn't even mime it. I couldn't even mime it for the video. It's like well, it was like a first take solo almost, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It was one of those yeah. things. I just you know, ripped it. that track and I sent him, I go, look, I, I put a solo on it, but I'm going to beat the solo next week. Oh. When I listened to it the next week, I was like, I can't beat that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but what confirmed it was I called Chris and I said, dude, I can't beat that solo. And Chris said, I was wondering what you were talking about because this is. <laughs> heard it and lost his mind and yeah. then i knew it was onto something but as a when you're a guitar player that plays with feel you're almost a different guitar player every day so i haven't been that guitar player in a long time <laughs> but when I, you're doing I doing it live when you're doing a solo like that that's based off of something gilmore did do you try and just get totally away from it or do you try to just kind of feed off of what he did i mean that's a He's a tough guitar player to cover. Right. So then that's a good question because I didn't go in with, uh, I didn't put the Gilmore hat on and went in like in a cover band or something like that. In a tribute, I also, I always think there should be an homage to the emotion intended. So that's what you're hearing. It's is David Gilmore's emotion intended through these hands and this heart. So that, and that, I believe I nailed it because it, yeah. There's an essence. A lot of people say, wow, you really captured the essence. And I'm like, thank you, because that was what I wanted. And uh, other people are like, wow. what?" I mean, it's kind of funny because when we do it live, it's like people freak out. They're like, and I, to me, it's just like an extension of me. Like a lot of people say a guitar in Phil's hands is like another appendage. And uh, I've heard that many times. And I, I do believe being able to do this in this band in this situation has become one of my one of my favorite things yeah yeah and when we do covers um you know we, we've got quite a we'll, we'll probably have a covers ep someday we, we've got material already but we like to take uh, chris and, and phil and i it, like he just said we want to put put our own heart and soul into it and um you know honor that song but we don't want to copy it. We want to put our raw emotion into it. I'm going to, I'm going to put my voice to it. I'm going to present it the way I'm feeling that song and Phil's going to play it the way he feels it. And hopefully the bands that we cover, you know, see that we're paying homage to them in our own way without just flat out going out and playing it just like they do, which, you know. Oh, and it's great because when we went out to play, we did 45 dates supporting Jeff Tate last fall. And when we played that song uh first of all we came out and people look at us like who are these guys because this is really cool and the songs are hooky and i remember everything and then we would do have a cigar and then the familiar familiarity light goes on and then we knock it out of the park and then now we have them. Now we have the audience and they, and we're on for another 20 minutes and they're, they're riveted. So it's, it's an amazing tool to be able to do that. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And it's such a great song. I mean, come on, who doesn't love that song? Oh well, yeah. You, well, you listened to the whole EP yesterday. So what was your favorite track off that? Naive. <laughs> Naive. Closer, baby. <laughs> Naive's good. Although I will tell you, uh, Burn Together is really good. And a lot of that is also because I'm a huge Queensryche fan, big Jeff yeah. Tate fan. So um, it was nice to hear him. He sounds great, by the way. Oh, yeah. In that, in that track. Phenomenal. phenomenal. Yeah. But honestly, I'll, I'll be 100% honest, naive. That guitar solo is up for solo of the year, in my opinion. 
Wow. And there's a little <laughs> breakdown you do at the end of the guitar solo. I don't know what the hell you're doing. I know, is man. Some, is there some <laughs> tapping going on? There's a what? Is it tapping at the end of that that little breakdown no, 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 after no. the solo? It's just a bunch of really quick chords going by, and I'm actually finger plucking. No. But that's it's a beautiful uh, part. Thank you. Oh. The, uh, we're, we're doing a contest. We have a contest that's a Phil X solo contest, and it's a naive solo. And I got to tell you, man, there's submissions. There's a, yeah. There are submissions coming in that are pretty phenomenal. And some of them are kids. So when you get, you know what you get when it's a kid giving you a guitar solo that, you, that they're supposed to cover? And it's awesome. I call that good parenting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, good genes too. Yeah, yeah, good genes. Yeah, it's yeah. But we've we've got a lot of entries for that. It's been it's been awesome. And and that song. I mean, we're we're talking about you know really pushing that to radio now. It's the big first song off the album. So I'm glad to hear that you like that. And well, I like uh, them all. I thought they were all really good, but that one really thank, stuck. With thank me. you. Yeah, it, it, it's so a rocker. I got a, I got a lot of laundry off my brain in that song. That, that was pretty much about my first three years in the music business. <laughs> it's interesting you bring that up because I was reading your bio, and I'm going to read this because I don't want to mess up the quote. Your bio reads, he's a beat poet for, a modern, for the modern age and a throwback to a simpler time when troubadours traveled the streets and sang about what inspired them. Wow. Who wrote pretty good, that? right? I did not write that. I wish I did, but I did no, not. Who wrote? That's um, good, right? That was what inspires you now. My life, I guess. I'm getting st everything I see in life. Um, everything I've gotten in my life, I've earned it myself. Um, I wasn't handed anything, and I've always been an entrepreneurial spirit. Um, I was in music till I was about 20, and I realized I was going nowhere fast and that I wasn't uh, mature enough or prepared to embark on that journey at that time. So I chose to finish my education. I got married early, young, because I needed somebody to straighten my ass out. And uh, had my three, I have three boys and went through that phase of life, raised them. And I just said, if I can ever get back into it and do it the right way and be able to fight the uphill battle that it, it is, you know, because when I told people I was going to, stop working for you know so daily in my other companies and get back into music they're like oh there's bands everywhere you'll never make. and i know that i know there's a lot of people out there that you never get hurt but i also knew i had done all this other stuff in my life and became my own person and i learned a lot that i can share with others and help them not make the same mistakes i did because i'm a fighter and i'll just get right back up and keep coming at you and, until i finish the job and uh, so I, 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 I tap into all my life experiences and I try to share it the best way I can with others. So they might avoid, avoid some of the pitfalls I've been through in my life. And I think you hear that naive. It's like, think, you know, before you buy that shit, then toast it with a drink, you know, right. because you never know what the intention is of that person you're dealing with. You think you do. And it all looks hunky dory on the outside. But when you get down to the nuts and bolts of it, about, you know, th two or three out of five times, it's uh, not going to happen the way you think it is. So I always try to put that into my writing. If you heard what you're saying on the album, you know, I'm, I'm sitting at home during COVID, had a lot of time on my hands, drinking margaritas on a back porch. I'd just flown home in Cincinnati on a fully masked plane and all that. And I'm like, what the hell is going on in this world? And I'm trying to share that emotion that we're all going through so we can all join together and, and try to be kind to each other and take care of each other. And so I try to share my thoughts and emotions. Usually it's after I've had a couple of beers about 11 or on at night when my mind is in the day is not in the way life's not in the way. And I can, I can get my thoughts out instead of going to therapy. I write it for all of you. That's a great moment in the show too. So, Yeah. Really, people, people really uh, are captivated by uh, the story that, that Kurt's saying. It's really cool. Yeah, and, and, and really on that tour, people, we were lucky if people knew we were even playing in the city, you know, because sometimes they didn't even know we were going to be there. And then 
we I talked before that song. That was a break in our show where I kind of share my emotions uh, with everybody and what I'm thinking. And man, we we had people singing along. Phil will even tell you. I mean, and they never even knew who heard of us before. First time they ever heard the song. It's it's that's why I do this. I love it. It, it it's uh, very heartfelt and it comes from my heart and my soul. And you know, it's funny. I. I... I, I sent a link to one of your videos to a friend of mine last night and she wrote back to me. She sent me a text and just said, it's, it sounds like a uh, spoken word with badass accompaniment. We get that a lot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I thought that was a really cool nice that. way to describe it, you know, and it does during the verses, it sounds like spoken word with kick-ass yeah. music behind it. Well, you know what? And we, we needed, we knew we needed, we got my buddy, Michael Vasos. We go way back to Toronto. And when we were putting the band together, I knew we needed another great singer. So I thought I need a guy who can play anything on guitar and sing better than me. And I called Michael up and he had to figure out his schedule. And then when he came on the road with us, it was like such a no brainer. Like he sings oh. great. Also sings the Jeff Tate parts of, uh, <clears throat> burn together. And, uh, and it's kind of like, what's going on over there? Like he's yeah. so good. the whole band. We have Dango on drums, and we have uh, Christian Sturba on bass, and he's singing as well. So we, when Kurt does his thing, which is the spoken word thing, and then everybody starts singing in the chorus, you got your rock chorus that everybody wants to hear. You know, I mean, I think I love that aspect of it. I really do. Yeah, because man, because we can go, Phil and I, we can go with the lowest of lows and the highest of highs between us, you know, and it's pretty cool when we layer it all. And Phil did a great job. I mean, I want it, we want to keep the same band together as a family. And I'm really big on that. I like seeing the same people in a band, not just people in and out. So we we Phil did a great job and we and it was very important to us that we got the players that could not only play their instruments well, that but could sing and help Phil and I present our music. So good job, Phil, on that. Hey, thanks, bud. Michael. Well done, did. Phil. <laughs> Michael's like the emer my emergency backup Phil X vocalist, too, in case Phil's ever busier. It's so awesome. He's such a great guy. Nice. Okay, so you talked about the Jeff Tate tour. Um, I get it. You know, he's a great vocalist, a great lyricist. You're a great vocalist, great lyricist. Ingve. <laughs> There's not a lot of talk, and he does his talking with his fingers only. So it's going to be a really interesting night of music. It, it really is. Awesome. It's, it's kind of exciting. I'm, I'm, I'm actually half excited, half curious to see how it's going to go. But yeah. I know once people see us, they'll, uh, we have this endearing... I mean, I know it's rock and roll and endearing isn't really a, a word you would use with rock and roll, but I think people see us on stage and they see the honesty and they, I mean, you can't really beat good hooks. I, I, I stand behind our hooks, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 oh, sorry, go ahead. There's not much, you know, it's, this first half of the year, a lot of stuff was rescheduled, you know, from the year prior and, you know, it was, they reached out to us. I was on that, uh, performing on that ship rocked cruise with the stowaways. And I got uh, a uh, message from uh, the booking agent, passed it on to my management. So um, it's anytime we can get out in, in front of people and play our music and promote our music. Um, we'll see what happens after that, but I look forward to it. And I look forward to, uh, you know, seeing Ingve perform and I'm very grateful for the fact that uh, they've invited us to be direct support on that tour. So it's going to be great. But I do have a question for Phil about this tour. Um, <clears throat> when you're playing in a show and the room is filled with guitar players, is there a different approach to what you're doing as opposed to, <clears throat> I don't know, a room filled with, I hate to say this, but like middle-aged women who think your singer in the other band is pretty cute. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, I, man, I've, I've been through a lot. I mean, think about, think about my entire uh, experience with that band in the beginning when people were holding up Where's Richie Science. So I had to overcome that. So, and I did. I felt, I felt like I did. But 
the, the guitar players, you know, I've done, I've done, um, you know, I've been in situations where it's, I've played before another or even played with, you know, when, when you live in LA, it's not uncommon to be on stage with Nuno Betancourt at a, at a Lucky Strike Jam or an Ultimate Jam with Doug Aldrich or another amazing guitar player. I love so, that. Um, and so playing before Ingve is like, I mean, you know, I was a kid when that first Alcatraz record came out and it blew my mind. So there's an element of holy shit. But as a guitar player, it's, it's a, for me, it's like, a, you know, it's a different vibe. And if, if all those guitar players... I mean, I'll play more notes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what do we do? What's the third song we're playing tonight? I think it's just a guitar solo for four minutes. <laughs> <laughs> or make it 10. Make it 10. <laughs> yeah, there's going to be a lot of notes at that building every night. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I, I can't wait till I can't wait till uh, someday, you know, we're blessed enough, hopefully, to headline and Phil can just unleash whatever the hell he wants every night. We're not worried about 35 minutes. <laughs> it's going to get crazy. Yeah. Now, now, speaking of touring, I have to say this because I'm talking to one of the great Canadian guitar players right now. And you're not playing Canada anytime soon? What the hell? Yeah, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's stuff's been uh, weird. Um, if you think about everybody being excited to get on the road, I mean, even 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 Bon Jovi in April, we're not hitting any uh, major markets. We're not hitting California. We're not hitting New Jersey. And what people don't understand is that not only is our venues not available because of other artists, there's also sports going on too. So we play the same uh, same arenas. So. Uh, and then crossing the border, nobody knew how that was going to be. And it, uh, apparently it's opened up, which is great, but it's not, it's a little late to get uh, a, a venue for the month of April in Canada. But at the same time, it's, I, I don't, I can't say if it's the same thing with the Ingrid In Malmsteen tour. I can't say if that's the same situation, but uh, we're all hoping to get to Canada because Michael's also Brontonian and uh, right. we have friends across the country. So that's kind of cool too. Um, but you know, it's for us, we just, you know, this came up and it was like, we're excited. We just want to get out and play. It's an, it's an amazing time to get out and play because people have been dying to get out to see concerts for the last two, three years. Right. So it's great to be a part of something that's happening, which is awesome. Absolutely. Absolutely. I got my tickets for Kim Mitchell in uh, april and it's my first concert since i think you played with him a little while ago kurt uh i saw bumblefoot in ottawa um good <laughs> right before the oh, pandemic yeah yeah, yeah i played with bumblefoot on uh, ship rock he, he was in both the songs i did on ship rock so that was that was awesome yeah he's <laughs> but, i mean two years in shows is ridiculous yeah, and he 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 went out he went out, but I think he was doing it. Was that a solo tour? Yeah, it was just him and a guitar. Yeah, wow. yeah, it was no, he... probably one of the greatest things I've ever seen. He played La Villa Strangiato note for note, beginning to end, all by oh, himself. He's so good, man. It's ridiculous how good he is. He's sick. He's really good. Okay, so you're going April, May, June with Ingve. Well, no, May and June. Oh yeah, well the end of April. Well, end, of April, April. end of April into June. Yeah, la yeah, last couple of days of April into Ju about June fifth, and then we're doing the fiftieth uh, anniversary Rainbow Show. But that that I'm, I don't think Phil will be there. Pretty sure, right, Phil? Like ninety nine percent. Probably 100%. not. We're the you know when the bands like uh, Bon Jovi go out, the bubble is a is a, bubble, is a thing. Yeah. it's a big thing. So we. Right. Yeah, there's no getting on a plane and going flying to LA to do <laughs> play <laughs> rainbow between two Bon Jovi shows. But me, me and the rest of the guys will be there. We'll we'll we're yeah. still we'll still kick the shit out of that show and 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 uh, yeah, we're excited. And then who knows? Hopefully, we'll be on the road right after that. I just I've got management working on it, and I'm keeping the pressure up, and I'm ready to go. So, and you also said you had about thirty songs down. Uh, when is when are when's more music coming up? 
I've got those discussions as we speak going on with management. Um, I'm really been, I was out in LA the last couple of weeks. So there's a lot of new music coming, how it's presented and how it's brought out. You know, I've got to deal with other forces around to figure that out, but we're working very hard and we're definitely climbing up that hill and we're trying to get to that top of the mountain so we can just roll, roll, roll. So just bear with us, but yeah, there, there will be at least one new EP out this year. And also a soundtrack to my movie, Hellbilly Hollow, which features probably seven or eight of our tunes, some that you've heard, some that you haven't. And we even play one from the movie on, on tour. So I should be asking you the same question I asked Phil. Do you ever stop? No, I've, I've never stopped working. I, I can't, if I stopped working and I didn't have work, I would probably not even be here talking to you today because I would be stressed out when I work, I'm not stressed and I enjoy it. And that's why I named my album work hard, rock hard. I'm a firm believer that you work as hard all day and at night, whatever you whatever relaxes you and whatever you like to do, do it and enjoy your life. Yeah, but don't wake up every day and expect somebody else to take care of you because you weren't born to be a liability. You were born to become somebody and to make a difference in the world. So I, 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 if, I, if I sat around idle, it would drive me crazy. Things are very different than they used to be when I grew up. In yeah. rock and roll. You know, like it used to be someone was in a band and that was it. Maybe once in a while they would record a solo album, but now it's, you know, Phil, you got Bon Jovi, you've got this, you've got the drills. I mean, holy Christ. <laughs> I don't know how you remember which show you're playing each night. Well, and Phil and I will often say, you know, it, I, I've said to Phil and he, and he brings me back down, you know, he corrects me, but it's like, I wish we would have met in our twenties, but we might've drugged things out. We might've, you know, now we, at the time we met now, same age, we got, you know, 20 years to just go blow this thing up all over the globe. Yeah. We got to focus, you know. Experiences made us who we are. And that's, right. those are the people that are clicking now. So yeah, we were people before, you know, it's always, I don't know. It's, it's to, for me, music is, is a, is a heart and honest thing. And uh, it's very rare lately to, to meet people that are, have that mindset and it's just being here now. It's just the right time and really awesome. And I mean, everybody's cool. You know, Dan, uh, Dan does other stuff when he's not doing the drills and uh, you know, I do Bon Jovi when I'm not doing this. And then, it's like, for me, it's like, uh, it's, I don't have to fill my schedule. I just, if I can play guitar every day, I'm a happy guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is the dream. Yeah. yeah. And also, I, I, before I go, this is not about your band, but about the drills. I was watching YouTube last night, and I think I saw the greatest song title in the history of the world. One of your songs from the drills. You know which one? <laughs> uh, wish my beer was as cold as your heart. Yep. <laughs> Did you yep. say yep? Yep. <laughs> yeah. I always thought that should be a country song, but it rocks pretty good. <laughs> well, it starts off pretty country. <laughs> it does. That is such a great song name. I love it. Well, listen, gentlemen, this has been fantastic. And congratulations again. Work hard, rock hard, fantastic EP. I'm hoping for more very soon. Because yeah. the only problem with the album is it's too short. Well, see, that's the EP thing. You know, it's funny. We all have ADD, so we like content, but not a lot. But I'm hearing it more and more that people want like a whole record, and everybody in the industry says, "No, no, nobody wants a whole." Record. I know, I know. Or they want you should just put out a single, and I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. I don't, I don't agree with that. Yeah, I think we might we might be rethinking all of that because we're we're we're, we're our own style, our own unique rock band, and we need to for, remember who who a major part of our audience is. So, I appreciate your feedback on that because I've struggled with that. I never thought I'd put out an EP. I thought it'd be an album, but you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. You know, we've got. Well, here's the thing, though. 
it left you wanting more. Exactly. I was just going to say right. that. We so teased you a little. About, there is something about that. That's right. Yeah, and, you know, a lot of times, no offense to bands who are putting out full lengths, but a lot of time there's a lot of filler on a yeah. full length. Yeah. You know, so this one had no filler, which is, that's a good thing about an EP. But yeah, I do want more and I want it sooner than six or eight months down the road. Yeah. Yeah. If we could turn a couple EPs a year, that's kind of my goal, but, but we'll, we'll see. I mean, I, I appreciate that feedback very much. Cause I, I when my first albums, I, like Boston, more than a feeling top to bottom, love that. I, I like to listen to an album in its entirety without a bunch of filler on it. And Phil and I are constantly trying to beat the song we just did before. So the sky's the limit. So I, I, I I'll, I take everybody's advice and I process it in my on my gerbil wheel in my brain. So <laughs> back in back in the day, um, there wasn't very much filler on those albums like no. Boston or no. early Van Halen. You can listen to no filler. Don't look at that to first two Van Halen well, albums. You can listen to Highway to Hell and Back in Black, Top to Bottom. You can listen oh, to yeah. Van Halen One. Yes. Well, top to bottom. I can listen to Van Halen top. anything top to bottom. I don't care what it is. That guy's he's my guy. <laughs> Good go well, Van Halen. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad you liked our our first uh, our debut, and uh, I think you're really going to dig what we have coming, and all your listeners will as well. And we're working very hard to build this thing and and take it all over the all over the globe. So. I wish you luck. I think it's going to be great. I'm, I'm very excited to see how it goes with Ingve to see, you know, some yeah, of the big difference, but um, it's going to be great. I hope you get to jam with them too. Have you ever jammed with Ingve? You haven't. No? No. Maybe That'll he doesn't jam with people. Maybe you go, hey man, why don't you come in and do a, a song with us? Yeah, I don't, I don't think he would. Maybe you'll get to use one of his 75 amps though. <laughs> I know we're gonna have the wall, the wall of marshals behind us every night. I'm for sure. I think, I think they should all be plugged in. I don't want to see 75 amps off. I want to see 75 amps on. How many Come does on, he is, actually use? Well, one, two, one, two five, at the most. Maybe four, max. Four max. <laughs> well, at least put the light. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I would love to hear that thing turned on all the way. Reminds me of Spinal Tap every time I see him on stage. I think it was Spinal Tap. Oh, with that wall, yeah. The wall of marshals, yeah. So anyway, good luck. Congratulations again. Fantastic record. Uh, work hard, rock hard. And uh, good luck with everything you're doing. Good luck with the movie. Good luck with Bon Jovi. Good luck with this, the drills. Oh, my God, there's too many things to name. Well, thank you very much. And thank you for having us. And uh, anytime, the pleasure was mine and Phil's to be honored with you. That's fantastic. Thank you.